make a start. Can I, uh, can I welcome everybody, members of the public, particularly, to the April meeting of the Combined Authority. Um, before moving into the detail of the meeting, just a few of the usual housekeeping points. Can I remind everyone that all mobile phones should be turned to silent uh, for the duration of the meeting? Uh, to ensure that everyone in the chamber can hear the debate, can I please ask that members and people presenting reports use the microphones provided? And finally, as usual, the meeting will be filmed by officers from the Combined Authority and will be available on the Mosley Council YouTube channel later today. So, uh, without further ado, uh, item one is apologies. Do we have any apologies? Yeah, we have apologies from Council Wesley. Okay, so we'll Call those apologies. Item two, uh, declarations of interest. Have any declarations of interest been received? Okay. Item three, minutes of the last meeting of the combined authority held on the 6th of March. It's in your agenda pack, pages one to six. Can I ask, are these approved as a correct record of that meeting? Is that agreed? Simon? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and that takes us to the, uh, the first main item, which is item four, Sustainable Transport Enhancements Package, Step Change for Growth. And Frank Rogers, you're going to take us through this, please, Frank. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Yes, this, this report is to request the mind authority approval of the next major scheme business case. It's the Sustainable Transport Enhancements Package, or STEP, as, as we call it, that we're looking to get approval for associated with the growth deal funding and it's for years one and two of the step delivery program. Um, the Liverpool City Region is managing a program of de de developing major schemes to take advantage of the investments available to the local growth fund. As leaders will be aware there are 13 schemes on a prioritised list of some of the City Region's most pressing investment priorities for transport. That's gone through a prioritised process and they're scheduled out as detailed in the city region's transport assurance framework. Following that shortlisting, partner authorities across the city region have continued on the development of those 13 range of business cases and they address some of the most urgent transport and highway issues that we face in the Liverpool city region. Those 13 schemes are covered in, in table 3.2. The combined authority have previously approved major scheme business cases for three of those schemes. Uh, at the meeting of the 23rd of January 2015, and uh, uh, the access to Nosley Industrial Park, the A5300 Nosley Expressway improvements, and the Newton Willows Interchange scheme. Th this um, scheme before you today is the STEP Sustainable Transport Enhancements Package. This is a £41.4 million investment programme which picks up a large number of small scale transport investments on the highway, the rail and sustainable transport and travel network. A summary of the stop step documents is attached in Appendix 1. This report is covered with that, uh, focused on that major scheme business case for the step. I won't go through all the content detailed within 4.1, but basically we have the 41.4 million made available to us as part of this package. It had provisional approval from DFT. Since the growth deal announcement, we've had to undertake further work to get this package of work through to, to full allocation to ourselves. And given the size and value of the STEP program, what we've looked to deliver is a two-year program of identified schemes with a following four-year package of schemes that still has further development work to be undertaken to determine the exact nature and detail of those schemes but that work is currently ongoing with tag representatives on behalf of each of the city region partners. So, in, in approvals of the report, as, as you're aware from our assurance framework process, we have an independent assessor, Waterman, who would take all of the business case approvals and scrutinise those approvals to ensure that they comply with the city region's defined assurance framework. There were no major deficiencies identified with the business case that's before you today, but Waterman did highlight a number of issues that are picked up at 4.9 in the report. Transport Advisory Group has, has sought further clarification on these issues. Response from the scheme promoters is picked up at Appendix 2 of 
the document, the Transport Advisory Group is now satisfied that based on the assessment that we've received from Waterman's responses to the queries raised, that the, the project of schemes is in a position where it can be taken forward, and it's the view of Waterman's as that independent assessor that the business case for the set package can be recommended for approval by the Transport Advisory Group to the combined authority. The report covers the resource implications that are just on years one and two, and then there's further issues in relation to four. Further years, there's a detailed technical report there on the independent assessment of, of the business cases, and in conclusion, based on the advice of the independent assessor, the Transport Advisory Group recommends the combined authority that it gives approval to the major scheme business case for the sustainable transport enhancement package of activities to enable scheme promoters to then draw down on fund and allocated through the growth deal award. That will bring all, all of the four schemes that we have to get approval for for year one through to the appropriate point should you be prepared to approve this package of work and will mean that we now have just short of £70 million pounds worth of package through all of the approval process and assured process and ready to move into on-site delivery phase. Happy to take any questions. Okay, thanks, Frank. Uh, any questions or comments, members? Mr. Fultz? Robert? Yeah, I might say I think it is uh, extremely commendable progress to know the uh, requirements of the bus analysis size of the schemes and because of the DFT requirements to get business cases for a whole fourth of 1.4 million pound package, the concern that we had is trying to pull together the individual elements of scheme detail, scheme design for 41.4 million pounds worth of activity was an incredibly challenging and time consuming task. And we went to DFT with a proposal that said we can do years two, one, one and two, because we already have schemes identified, we can uh, provide data on those schemes, and we can justify a business case against those schemes. But to ask us to be able to have them for years three to six was, was really a, an unacceptable challenge within the time frames that were available. Um, we have been able to persuade DFT that we approve this as a two-stage process with schemes identified in year one and two that are currently known and identified city, city meeting objectives, but to some extent we are delivering against the growth deal objectives, whereas for years three to six, we want to make sure that they're driven from the um, growth targets of the city region. So DFT have raised a number of issues with that, but we've been able to get through that process and the tag representatives and each of the partners and now looking at identifying schemes for that three to six year period, which will enable us then to put individual scheme detail back to you as the combined authority to get approval of exactly what sits in those five and a third year program. But the concern was if we try to identify the six years of the scheme at one go, we may run the risk of not being able to get full DFT approval at this all. Okay. Just a quick one, I think on page 28 is just um, a reference to what's on the seven question time and it appears to be prophesizing that we'll sample the long debt from the general economy without the end of the support and the product budget is substantially more than that's not actually going to be so well. Right, 
busy now arguing that that should be a much higher figure, but a, a commitment for 120 uh, completely new trains um, is specified, as well as the need to completely refurbish all the remaining trains to an as new um, standard. That will be supported by a range of other customer benefits, including Wi-Fi on all trains, as well as air conditioning on transport line trains, etc. There's also improvements to um, smart ticketing, customer services, and the continuation funding of community rail partnerships where they exist across the country, as well as an investment of around 30 million in small to medium sized stations, which will significantly benefit certain parts of the uh, city region, potentially in particular uh, the south of Wolves and to, uh, to Manchester route. There's also improvements in the quality <coughs> regime and the levels of revenue protection that are contained within the ITT. So I think it's fair to say that the specifications that have been produced now reflect the transformational nature of the North's requirements compared to what would have been a central government and steady state opposition from a year ago. The final element is the partnership agreement. There is now a legally binding uh, partnership agreement between Rail North uh, and the Department for Transport, which was signed and agreed between Secretary of State and Rail North directors on the 20th of March uh, this year. That has four unique uh, attributes, which are at the top of page 37. The first is that the management of both the Northern and the Transpennine franchise will be done uh, from the North. Um, that the office, uh, there will be an office made available in Leeds, and the team that currently work within the Department for Transport in London managing those franchises will be relocated to Leeds to manage that set of services on behalf of Rail North. The partnership agreement also contains an assumption that during the period of the franchise that Rail North will take more responsibility for um, local rail services with the potential to let the franchises themselves in 2023 24 and that is a positive assumption unless the Secretary of State can prove that the North does not have the capacity and capability to do so. So that's a positive assumption that that will happen unless the government decide otherwise. So it's a real devolution of powers with a real timeline um, to happen over the period of the franchise. And the other two elements of that partnership agreement are that if Rail North, so the local authorities can come forward with other ideas to reduce subsidy, that at least 50% of that subsidy reduction will be retained by Rail North for further investment, as opposed to the current position where that currently goes back down to Treasury. And if Rail North decided to generate additional revenue by fares increases above the rate of inflation, uh, it could do that and 100% of that revenue could be retained for further investment so it's a real big step forward in having control over responsibility, but also potential future funding. That franchise will be managed by a strategic board made up of three members of Rail North and three members of DOT overseen by an independent chair, and we're busily putting in place the recruitment process for that independent chair to represent Rail North in our future discussions. All those things have been achieved during the last year, and we're now into the next stage of mobilising, making sure that the bidding process and brings the right results and making sure that the Rail North views again uh, are reflected in further discussions. Uh, the recommendations uh, share in section 2.1. Okay, thanks, David. Um, <coughs> comments, questions, on this report? No? Okay. Joe? Just one is in 6.1 and, and the uh, products of the function are, are, are good. Secondly, I think these are big prizes for the bidders. 
Congress, and therefore to see 5.4 there so plainly expressed, uh, David, and also again in recommendation in 2C. These are minimum certification bids, and to try and raise the ante, uh, big prizes, long term contracts, and therefore a great incentive for the, for the winner to produce an impressive deal. And uh, I know driving forward that agenda to, to ramp up the, the offer, but the more we support, it's a, it's a two way process actually, and the expectations that we impress upon them for them to win. Thanks. I think the other thing that we found with the project is that across the north, across all political parties and public and private sector, where we had one script that we were in discussion with the department and are now in discussion with the bidders, that helps. So um, they are committed to at least 120 new trains. Uh, we've been briefing all the local transport authorities in their discussions with the bidders. They should be saying that that should be 220 trains because it's a very good business case for that. So the more voices that we can get making that point, I think it's absolutely Okay, anybody else? Um, I mean, I'd just like to say I think this model seems to be really working well, and as well as kind of yourself and your team, uh, I think Liam, you, you know, you've done a really good job representing the city region on the uh, on the management board. So you know, congratulations to you. So we look forward to seeing this uh, come to fruition and the benefits flow to the city region. So can we agree the recommendations? Is that agreed? Okay, thank you. Right, uh, that then takes us on to item six, transport for the north next steps. So, and Liam, you're going to take us through this, please? Yeah, thanks very much. And this is very much the latest iteration with regards to transport for the north. It will come as no surprise uh, to members of the authority because it's been shared with them throughout the process and there's been regular updates uh, accordingly. The key aspect of the report is actually presenting the full interim report of transport for the north that was launched almost a month ago up at the port of Liverpool and a number of members of the authority, Phil, Peter and Robert, were there to see that launch. Um, effectively, it pulls together uh, a proposition of what Transport for the North will look to do over the next 12 months and the detailed uh, interventions that it will investigate and look at how we can pull those options together. Crucially for Liverpool City Region, it includes within that that the Department of Transport with HS2 Limited will have to investigate the detailed case for a full high-speed link coming all the way into Liverpool, going uh, eastwards towards Manchester as the start of that east-west trans-north network with a link onto the HS2 network. Uh, an intervention that we've long and loudly argued for and one that we believe has the ability to uh, solve the city region's high-speed requirements both east-west and north-south. However, it is very much that over the next 12 months, uh, that option and a number of other detailed options right across the north will be investigated. It's incumbent on us that we engage with that process to make sure that that detailed work is done and that the case for that intervention is made and heard and comes to fruition. And crucially, as well as that detailed uh, officer-based work, that we continue the hard, strong political lobbying that needs to go with that to make sure that, that case continues to be heard make sure that, that comes to fruition accordingly. I think that's the best way of succinctly summing it up, but again, more than happy to take any questions that come from there. Okay, thanks, Lynn. Any, any comments on this report? Robert? Okay, the meeting, but I don't mind just to turn to me 68, and then it's uh, really four lines, actually, it's been hard fought for. Uh,
great pass out of that port right along the kingdom. So all those flights that we've been working for the last six months now appear in this interim report. It works to continue, uh, but it is a major step forward. Yeah, thanks for that, Robert. Uh, add to that, actually, on page uh, 79. I think it's the most important part of the point when it comes to water freight. Actually, about producing a northern multimodal freight and logistics strategy. Because while we welcome the interventions that are pledged for the Port of Liverpool already, we actually need something which reflects the movements of freight and logistics right across the world, but crucially with regard to our port and other big locations in the city region. So I think that's where the real detailed work that we will lead on, because the Liverpool city region leads on freight as part of transport. We have the opportunity to pull together a very transformational vision of how we move books across the world. Okay. Any, any other? And, and Liam, just, just finally from me, I mean, presumably we, we need to keep, keep the pressure up, particularly on, on any new government to, to make sure the funding for this is, is in place uh, the other side of the election. Yeah, without a doubt, whatever happens on May 7th, we need to make sure that our compelling vision for high speed links and all the additional connectivity benefits we need to see that comes from this becomes a reality. So the lobbying must continue at pace and if anything get louder and stronger. Okay, uh, so can we agree the recommendations on that report? They agreed? Okay, thank you. Uh, we now move on then to item uh, 7, which is updates on European Union 2014 to 2020 programme. And, and Jed, you're going to take us through this, please. The, um, the report uh, is a combination of really, a kind of general update on the current situation in the program for 2014 to 2020. Uh, highlights a number of um, key issues and risks. Uh, the first and most prevalent, which kind of underpins a lot of the important points, is around the increasing nationalisation of the whole Indian regime and uh, the way in which spend and allocation happens and management so are actually going to be determined elsewhere. Within that highlights the, uh, the risk of uh, underperformance because if we fail to deliver out on things that we put forward, then obviously that money is likely to be pulled and redistributed elsewhere. On the plus side of that is if we do perform uh, and deliver ours and other areas, then we've really got a chance of being able to increase the amount of money that flows uh, into the city region from that point of view. So with the emphasis is absolutely going to be on the delivery and making sure, making sure that Uh, second point to highlight, Chair, I think uh, the thing about authority uh, members will be uh, well aware of this. There's uh, substantially less money in this program than that which is used to, and uh, we should be able to look at this as far as judicial review and court action uh, about HF and what's so on this particular point. Um, but there still remains, I think, uh, an issue about what you might refer to as expectation management of uh, partners and bidders locally to make sure that people realise the reality of what we can now have. Decades. That points to the need to uh, develop uh, a communications plan and to maintain that and kind of uh, build that dialogue and that kind of set of information and work well with that piece of work uh, at the moment. And then finally, to uh, my government's, um, we will need to review some of the governance structures around the EU funding program, how our lands and implement authority, and how we also uh, utilize uh, technical assistance and those other kind of forms of funding that we can actually more. general update, but uh, one or two uh, points of concern and one or two of the slides which we'll come back to in future meetings. Thanks, Jim. Any comments for Peter? Just a point of clarity.
Thanks, and uh, much cheer. Um, Jed, given that, th thanks for the paper, given that the um, nationalisation um, of the money is not a real danger that the government is going to direct our spend and possibly our priorities, which is already as the lines of what we set out, I just wonder whether or not we should write to government again in line with what our priorities are and put that down there. Thanks, Jed. I think there is a risk of that. Expectations, Jeff. Uh, I, I attended a, an EU information day a couple of weeks ago where we uh, kind of updated all the partners in the city region on the programme, and the room was absolutely packed because obviously people thought there was a big pot of European money, you know, that they wanted to access. And, and, and as you say, you know, the the, the, net, the current the new programme is, you know, radically uh, less than the uh, the, the previous programme. So. Um, you know, I think the communication of that is, is essential and people need to be realistic about what, what is, is, is achievable within this new programme because the, the quantum of funding is just not going to be there. Uh, that's a big, big challenge for us. Uh, Joe. Uh, Joe. Yeah. I, I, I just was on to this So uh, you can see the recommendations before you in paragraph two. Can we, can we agree those recommendations? <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Um, and then uh, finally, item eight, minutes of the audit committee, 10th of March. Um, can I ask if these can be confirmed? Agreed. Okay, I've not been in, informed of any other urgent items, so can I thank everybody for their attendance and your contributions to, the, to this meeting, and remind you that the next meeting of the Combined Authority will be at 11 o'clock on Friday the 19th of June.